welcome to the Infinity College basketball tip off. And welcome to Morgantown, West Virginia. Packed house here tonight at a battle in the Big 12, number 18, West Virginia, taking on number two, Kansas. Frank Mason and Company, unbeaten in the Big 12 at 7 and 0. Oh. We check out the standings. Javon Carter's group at 4 and 3 in the league. We mentioned Kansas 7 and 0. Oh. They won 12 straight regular season titles. Hi, folks. Thanks for joining us. John Shambi, the Hall of Famer, Dick Vitale. All right, so Kansas has won 18 straight, but the last three times they've come to this building, they've lost. This is where you want to be on a Tuesday night for college hoop. They were number one last year when they came here, and they left with a big L. I mean, this place is rocking. There's lots of hoops hysteria going on, and they need a win badly coming off two really tough losses. Kansas has one of the best guards, one of the best players in the land. Frank Mason, a legit player of the year candidate. Well, when you talk about player of the years, you got to talk certainly about Mason. His name has to be there with Josh Hart, Lonzo Ball. Mason's been shooting 53.7 from the three, from the three, makes big plays. They haven't lost a game since November. The reason, the PTP or Frank Mason. Now, West Virginia, they're used to exerting pressure. They're going to be feeling a little some right now because they've lost two straight and they need a win. You know, they lost two straight. They got four losses, Boo. Think about it. Four losses by a total of 11 points. Four possessions. They'd be number one in the country coming in here tonight if they won those games. And they're going to make free throws, and they can't turn the ball over. Now, forcing turnovers, a crucial part of West Virginia's success. We'll see how it plays out tonight. You've been watching the Infinity Tip-Off. Now we take a look as coaches compete for a charity of their choice in the Infinity Coaches Charity Challenge. Syracuse head coach Jim Beheim is no stranger to winning. Note the bling. But to win the Infinity Coaches Charity Challenge against other great coaches like Temple's Fran Dunphy, He'll need more than shiny jewelry and a 47-year Hall of Fame hoops resume. He'll need your votes. Yep, still got it. Vote today at ESPN.com slash infinity. Temple head coach Fran Dunphy doesn't call himself a baller. He's just not that guy. But when you hail from the hard scrabble streets of Philadelphia, your game has to be tough. Still, he'll need your votes to win the Infinity Coaches Charity Challenge because it'll take more than shockingly unexpected hops to beat Jim Beheim and the other great coaches. That just happened. Vote today at ESPN.com slash infinity. Something new has arrived. Uniquely designed for the driven. Introducing the first ever Infinity QX30 crossover. Lease the first ever Infinity QX30 for $2.99 a month. Visit your local Infinity retailer. Welcome back to Super Tuesday presented by CenturyLink. This is just the fourth all-time meeting between Kansas and West Virginia. West Virginia has its first win over the Kansas Jayhawks. Buck winding down. Titan attacks. Let's have yes. Yes. West Virginia upsets the Jayhawks. Save the women and children, everybody. <laughs> Number one Kansas falls at Morgantown. West Virginia trying to make it four straight at home over Kansas. The Mountaineers and the Jayhawks coming up on Super Tuesday. Right now, we hand it over to Andy Katz, who a little bit ago joined Bill Self. Well, Bill, you guys have lost three straight in this building. In what way has West Virginia made it so difficult for you guys to win here? Well, I think, you know, when you play a top 10 team on the road, it's always difficult to win. And they, they have been basically every year we've been here. And, and, and they're much better than the ranking right now. They just, they just had a, a, a 
a, a rough week, but but uh, they've lost four games all in the last possession, so they could easily be 19 and 0 and ranked number one in the country. And uh, but their pressure's bothered us. Uh, uh, you know, it's one thing to, to turn it over. You just don't want live ball turnovers that lead to easy baskets. And, and we've done that, like a lot of teams have, too much with them. And, and they're, they're the best that will play against stealing extra possessions off the glass or 50-50 or balls. So we, we have to neutralize them in those areas and, 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 uh, and attack their pressure to score. Ready to roll here in Morgantown. John Chomby, Dick Vitale, Andy Katz. It's Kansas and West Virginia. And a gold out here in West Virginia. You know, John, really, the turnover's been great for West Virginia all year. However, it's been its downfall. In the last two games that they lost, they've been turning the ball over, and the other teams have been converting. Oklahoma, and certainly their last game where they were beaten by Kansas State. And immediately a foul is called on Frank Mason. Wow, wow. No self not happy with that. Look at him. He's frustrated right now, right out of the gate. What's going on? That's my star. It's going to be a good one, John. Man. That's that typical defense by Kansas. Man to man defense. Got a foul inside on Kansas. So, again, it's, it's a Jayhawks team that doesn't have a ton of depth. If Bill Self will play seven guys, maybe eight. He told me basically a seven-man crew because as a rookie got hurt, he's that big center with a world of potential. He said he might be the best center he's had other than Joel Embiid, who's been absolutely dynamite in the NBA. Yeah, they lost you, Joe Kazabuki, to a wrist injury. There he is with a cast on that left wrist, so he's done for the year, injured it in practice in December. And so now... You know, their main two bigs are Lucas and Bragg, and it's hard to play them together for feel, fear of foul trouble. Well, they go one for two on the free throw line, and that's been an Achilles heel for them as well, as Al McGuire would say. They really struggled on the line, especially in overtime. Mason weaving through, finds McKaylee, who puts it on the ground. McKaylee's really improved. The deflection there. And Adrian knocks it off for Graham, a turnover, West Virginia ball. That's West Virginia basketball, forced the turnovers. They do it better than anybody in the nation. Nathan Adrian, Morgantown's own, they love him here. Had a huge night when they knocked off number one Baylor, a career high 22. And here he is as he swings it to the right. Baylor came here number one two weeks ago, and they left with an unbelievable blasting. They got whipped big time by West Virginia. 89 68 they get Elijah Macon on the foul there so it'll go the other way now Bob Huggins earlier this year picked up his 800th career win he's got 806 his 10th season at his alma mater seven times to the NCAA tournament for the Mountaineers watch this battle right here a lot of pressure on that basketball Graham has certainly been outstanding as well He's had up and down moment scoring. Tip goes up and Adrian pulls down the board. They love Adrian, as you said, Boo. They love him here. Local. Oh! oh. Isa Ahmad aggressively to the rim. Isa has not played as well as they expected the last few games. They're fired up, baby. You can see it. You can see the intensity, the emotion during the workout, before the game. Kansas is going to get their A game. Makai Luke. And Lucas inside is fouled by Macon. That's his second. Take a look at the dunk. Well, there's the baseline drive right here. Get the ball up really quick. Jam. Nobody gets to the baseline. Up, up, and away. The one strength of Kansas is making the three. They do a great job shooting threes. They're better than 40%. And inbounds now Jackson. What a star he is. He's got the whole package. He's got to be able to shoot the ball a little better, but he can do so many other things. The post jump, there's the double up. Step back one line behind the ball. Mason at the bucket, no good. Out of bounds, West Virginia basketball. This is a smaller Kansas team than we're used to seeing. Jackson effectively playing 
the power forward spot. Yep. Hey, let me ask you, where's Ellis? I don't see Ellis out there. He's been there for the last decade. <laughs> Where was Ellis? Where's my guy? Well played, Dick wow. Vitale. <laughs> You know, Jackson, a great wing player. The difference that he and Wiggins, Wiggins had the ability to score a little bit more. But he does so many things on the floor really well. Carter off the mark, loose ball. And eventually Amon. Now Adrian. Early 3-0. West Virginia on top. Miles. Lucas the board. They really have a good look right there. Defense was right up in his face. Is that trap? She got to move the ball away from the trap. Ran a three, and that's their hallmark. We're tied up. Yeah, they can make the threes. There's no question. And that's really going to be a problem when you look at West Virginia trapping. If they don't turn the ball over, reverse the ball, they're going to get open looks. And Dick, so many things going to the pressing defense. You got to get some buckets. You got to get some makes like that. Got a score. Good drive to the basket. He's a model up to a good start. That last foul, uh, Josh Jackson, his first. You know, Issa was really a big time player on the scholastic level. Cleveland area came in with a big reputation. He's an outstanding talent. I mean, what a job Bob Huggins has done here in his alma mater. As you said, 806 wins in his career. Bill Self, by the way, nominated for the Hall of Fame, and I hope he gets in. That's the one thing off Bob's record right now is that national championship. Now Bill Self winning it in 2008. What about winning 12 consecutive unbelievable Big 12 titles, going for 13? I've said from day one, we heard about Baylor, Iowa State, all these teams. You got to go through Lawrence. Mason had the three block out of bounds. And it'll stay with Kansas. Andy Katz, how are you tonight? Doing great, guys. I want to add to Dick's point on the Hall of Fame. In November, West Virginia, for the first time, nominated Bob Huggins' name to be nominated in the Basketball Hall of Fame. He did not make this year, but now he's at least in the pool. And potentially next year, he might get into the position where Bill Self is, which is now we'll find out at the Final Four if Bill Self gets into the Hall of Fame. And this was the first year that Kansas had nominated Bill Self's name to be nominated, if you get my drift. Well, I'll tell you this, Andy, what's really happening with Jerry Colangelo really involved right now, there's more collegiate people being evaluated and really getting their recognition. We've seen it now over the last few years with guys getting in, coaches. And I'll tell you one thing, Bill Self's record, he belongs in the Hall of Fame. There's what no if, doubt about it. You won a national title, he went right now. 12 consecutive years, that's incredible. 12 times in a row to win the Big 12? What about Bob Huggins? Two, yeah. two, two programs in the Final Four, Cincinnati and West Virginia. Bob is definitely there, but I think the one thing they look at is that national title. Now, John Cheney, who celebrated his 85th birthday last weekend, he got him without it. I mean, to me, you don't have to validate yourself as a coach by going and winning a title, but a lot of people voting feel that way. High look goes left hand, no good. Lucas fighting for the rebound. And Kansas retains possession. That's big, the offensive glass. For the Jayhawks. Well, Lucas is the guy that's going to get him extra opportunities on that glass. And Josh Jackson, he knocks it down. Three Only shoot 26% from three. But Bill Self says, we just we want you to get it off quickly. Well, he made two big ones against Texas. He really did a good job there in that game. I'll tell you, he was in a rhythm shooting in the boat from out of Detroit. Lisa Maud has all six West Virginia points. Carries that, he's got all eight of them. That was a two. Nice start by Ahmad. They gotta make some perimeter shots. They try to get into that trapping area. Good spacing right now by Kansas getting him out of that spin. Yeah, but Kylo knocks it down. I'm gonna tell you right now, I said it at the top of the show, and I'll say it again. The trap is gonna leave open shooters, and the way they move the ball, and the way they shoot the ball, that could be a nightmare for West Virginia. Miles kicked out, Ahmad. Adrian trying to tip it in, Jackson up ahead, Graham. 
I tell you, Graham and Mason on the perimeter, as good as any tandem you'll see. Kentucky has a great tandem. That's going to be a big game Saturday night. What a game, Kentucky and Kansas. Oh, boy. Graham, a little step back that's fadeaway. I mean, that's pretty rough on your schedule. You go back-to-back -back road games at West Virginia and at Kentucky, and then you got to go home and play Baylor. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Bill, self -trouble. it might be the toughest threesome that he's had since his tenure at Kansas. But he said also that'll define how really good they are. Are they really? He they knows they're good, but are we really great and outstanding? We'll find out in the next week. He said. Jackson pulling down a rebound. Kansas by three. Jackson so versatile, multi versatility, handle well, can rebound, can post down the inside. If he adds a dimension, make a freeze, John. He's going to be special. Tyler puts it on the floor, kicks to the corner. They do a great job spreading the ball. Fire it up. And a loose ball ends up in the hands of Javon Carter. Carter might be the best defensive on the ball player in the nation. Jackson Miles. They got guys that can drive. Miles right there saw an opening. Attack the rim. Straight line to the goal. It is a packed house here tonight, Morgantown. West Virginia trying to knock off number two, Kansas. Shot blocks. Mike Stevens has the call. And a foul inside on West Virginia. Kansas on the road with a one-point lead here in the early going. ESPN's exclusive... Kansas on the road, the early lead in Morgantown. John Chomby, Dick Vitale, Andy Katz, and well, Kansas in this stretch where they are at West Virginia. Then Saturday, they'll take on number four, Kentucky. It's the toughest two-game stretch for any team this year. That's at least according to ESPN's BPI. Now, one thing Kansas has struggled with winning here in Morgantown. Andy Katz, if there's a common thread to Kansas struggling here at West Virginia, what is it? Well, it's the atmosphere, according to Nathan Adrian, the senior. He says, first of all, they feed off the atmosphere in this building. Clearly, in the last three seasons, two plus, if you will, the way they play has disrupted Kansas. But here's a great stat, guys. Nathan Adrian, Brandon Watkins, and Tariq Phillip, the three seniors who have been here for four years, if they win tonight, they're the only school that has beaten Kansas four straight times in their own building since Kansas has reeled off 12 straight Big 12 titles. Tell you one thing, Andy, also, Frank Mason doesn't want to have four consecutive losses in his career on the road. Mason Hoist, short on that shot. He's never won here in West Virginia. Tavon Myers, Tariq Phillip in the game. They do a great job, Kansas defensive transition, make you play five on five. Don't give you the numbers. Canate with the ball. Phillip fires, and he's short, but able to drag home his miss, and then put it off the window, but can't finish. Well, Phillip had 20 against Kansas State in their loss, and let a lead get away from them. Bruce Weber's club's done a great job. They felt they could have beaten Kansas. They thought maybe a call at the end of the game, huh? Yeah, two straight losses for West Virginia. One surprising, or more surprising, at home, against Oklahoma on the road as well. They lost at Kansas State. It's Carlton Bragg, plus one. He'll go to the line. Well, he gives him a solid performer on the interior coming off the bench. Gives him strong minutes on the inside. Nice little entry to him, gets that score. They're going to say that's on the floor, so it will not count. Foul prior to the shot. Yep. Let, me, let me tell you this also, the Oklahoma game, they hurt themselves. We talk about West Virginia, four for nine in the overtime shooting free throws. I mean, that's a no-no. That's a formula for losing. And it was six for 12 in overtime on the free throw line against Texas Tech. Brad goes over the back. We had a foul on Kansas. Well, Dick, one of the things for West Virginia that's a problem is that they only shoot it at 66% from the line. And that's something that could continue to bite them as the season goes on. Absolutely. There's no question. The simplicity of the free throw. We've talked about that so often, John. The difference many times in winning and losing. 
if there is a must game right now for West Virginia, if they want to be an elite contender as a team this year, they got to win this game at home. They got to win this game at home, coming off those two losses in a row. Good hands by LeGerald Vick. Kansas, by the way, not real great from the line either at 64%. Mason, no call. Myers eventually gathers it in. Nice little handle right there. Lost control. Out of bounds. And it'll stay with West Virginia. Mountaineers ball when we return. And Ohio State. You know, John, we're using obviously the AP poll. But they can claim that they be two number ones because they can say, you know what? Kansas number one That's in the right. coaches poll, USA Today. They come in here as number one. So again, but what about Villanova? Everybody been talking Villanova, maybe a little overrated right here, people. Forget about it. When you got guard play like they have with Brunson and Hart, Jenkins making shots and shoot the three so well. They really, I think now, become a story about possibly being good enough to go back to back like the Gators did. Yeah, timeout called by West Virginia. 32nd timeout, and we'll be right back to Morgantown. Thursday night at 8 Eastern on ESPN will be in Chapel Hill, the Dean Smith Center, North Carolina, taking on Virginia Tech. It's also streaming live on ESPN, on the ESPN app, and watch ESPN. I still think when I look at North Carolina, they're my club to win it all. I really do. I Javon, Javon, Carter. Javon Carter. He is such a solid player defensively, offensively. He helps him. He loves putting pressure on a basketball. Hey, they're going for the three ball tonight, Kansas. They're already taken eight threes. They've made three, but it's obvious that's going to be vital tonight for them. Kansas scoreless over the last three minutes. Jackson can't hit. And it ends up in Carter's hands. Carter leads them in both scoring and assists. And also, he's the key, the catalyst to their pressure, John, the way he applies pressure on that basketball. Out of motion offensively, Bob Huggins club. Nice fake. Good move by Adrian. And they're going offensive foul as Jackson able to step in and draw the charge. And the foul is on Adrian. That's his first. You know, he stepped in, got the charge on him, but he made an excellent move. Watch this here. See the head fake? He goes for the goal. Defense right there, no question. Excellent call. Mike Stevens there to make the call. Here comes that relentless tenacity. Their pressure has led to a lot of offense, creating offense off the turnover. Jackson, nice look, finds Bragg for the dunk. Did you see the versatility of Jackson right there? Change of direction, uses the left hand, drops the dive. What a pass. What a pass. So skilled. First time I heard about him was Tom Izzo. He was trying to recruit him big time, played high school basketball and prep school in California, but he's a Detroit kid. First points in four minutes for Kansas. As Watkins wasn't able to hit. Always putting pressure when he gets the ball up the court. Right, couldn't finish that one. Another great trademark in Kansas. Shot selection. Always take good shots. Keeps move inside. Tariq Phillip. Phillip with the drive to the goal. He gave up big for them in the game against Kansas State, but the team didn't help each other making free throws. And they've been sitting here with a W. Phillip and Myers, the two kids that come off the bench from New York City. Good hands, Carter. That one deflected. And eventually oh, Carter has it. And that foul's going to be on the Gerald Big. John. Higgins with the call, that's so obvious. Watch this right now, change direction, drop with the left hand. What a great pass, perfect execution. So efficient offensively. Now watch you drive right down the goal by Phillip. Goes right to the basket, switches to the left hand, he converts. John, he looked like you driving to the goal, baby. <laughs> yeah. In a great dream that I had one time. Oh, we all dream, I'm dreaming. I dream of day having some hair on my head. It's not going to happen. <laughs> West Virginia leading it by a couple. John Chavi, Dick Vitale, and Andy Katz 
Sold out here in Morgantown. Good look. That went off the hands of Benante. Eventually flips it up and in. Well, he did a great job using the ball screen. Came off that strong. Defense rotated to help. Slipped it off to his teammate. I got a layup. You take pride playing defense. You're going to play for Bob Huggins. You're going to guard people. Mason got it to go. How good Tell is you, that jumper's gotten so good. Well, how good has it been? Shooting 53.7. You know, he committed originally to Towson State. And Graham committed to Appalachian State. That's their backcourt. One of the best in America. They went to prep school. For a year, I wanted to get out of your commitments. My can hit, fight for the loose ball. Here's one of the leading candidates right here for player of the year. Even though I'd give the slight edge today because of the winner's mentality and what they've done, Villanova, for the entire year to Josh Hart. I think Josh Hart did such a callous on Mason's right there in the hunt. You know, it doesn't matter who's midseason player of the year. Postseason's one that counts. Self. Dick, you know what Bill Self told me? He said he's the most deserving player he's coached to be national player of the year. And you'll love this. Frank Mason told us earlier today he wished he could play four more years in college. He doesn't want this to end. I don't blame him. I wouldn't want it to end either if I shot 54% <laughs> of the three and I was on a winner. I wouldn't want it at all. Then he on a transition layup. Mason with that left hand able to get the layup to go. And Kansas back in front by a bucket. I beg your pardon, by a point. Bill told me before the game he never thought that he'd be this good. No foul call. Graham comes away with it. Graham step back. Three. Got it. Wow. I the tell clock you what, is not oh, running God. right now. Yeah, look at the clock. John Higgins recognizes it. I want a backcourt. Graham and right now, that's unbelievable. Graham and Mason. That'll be terrific Saturday night watching that hook up with Funk. Oh. And if uh, certainly Fox, I don't know his status. So 822. They got stuck there for a while. Hey Andy, you know anything about Fox's status for Kentucky? I don't yet. Uh, obviously it didn't look great the other night, but um, you know, clearly their focus this week is the Kansas game on Saturday. You know, John Calipari is, uh, I'm not saying he's dismissing the SEC, but he knows the most important game. Look at the intensity here out of Bob Huggins. He's right you see this face. right here? Remember we saw that with Deshaun Butler when he was when he was comforting him at the Final Four? And let me tell you something. These players love playing for Bob Huggins. The loyalty is a two-way street. I heard that from them today. I've heard it from when he coached in Cincinnati. And you can hear the passion that he's got for each one of these individuals. Well, you took any player to play for him. They certainly love playing for him. He cares about them. He really put so much of his heart and soul in it, and they recognize that. I got a comparison for you. Jim Calhoun, when he was at UConn, incredibly intense guy, yet every time Calhoun has something at UConn, the former players come back in droves. It's the same commitment and loyalty that Huggins players have from Cincinnati, going back to Akron, to here at West Virginia. Well, that's a great analogy you made there about Jim. There's no question. And you can go a step further. Look across America. These intense competitors that win on top. You see the love affair when Roy Williams won his 800th game. The players at Roy there. You go down to Mike Krzyzewski during his tenure. Go down to Tom Izzo. I mean, I can take you all over. John Thompson, he was down there at Georgetown. Got the clock down to 8.03. And Kansas with a four point lead. John Higgins right there. Kip Kissinger coming up. So it was 19 seconds. He said he is no relation to the brilliant Henry Kissinger. He said maybe, maybe a late, late, maybe a long. You, I, when uh, did you ask him? I, I asked him that right there before the game. That's tremendous. I saw that name. I said, wow, Henry Kissinger. Is that your granddad or something? He said, no relation. Kansas on an 8-0 run. They do. They get the spurts, Kansas. So impressive. What an elite program, year in and year out. Roy Williams had it up on top. Certainly, Bill's taking it there as well. 
bag. Rips down oh, the what a handle. Ooh. Jackson hanging, and he's fouled as he goes to the line when we come back. Kanate charged with the foul. Frank Mason starting to come alive. Take a look right here. Gonna show his distance, baby. He can shoot the jumper, no question. He's a long-range shooter. We are not comfortable with that. I mean, We're why not. do I want to talk about your, your clothes two days in a row? Guys. Wow. Um, I'd love to be able to segue marvelously, but uh, that Baylor, that interview with Scott Drew, Baylor, by the way, would be a one seed, according to Joe Lenardi's practicality, along with Kansas. Well, you know, it's so early right now. You get the whole month of February. That's going to change and change on a regular basis. Certainly their game with Kansas is going to be very meaningful. But you know what's the difference in this game right now? It's the three ball. You look at Kansas, they made five threes. You look at West Virginia, they're one for six. So the three ball has been really, really vital here, for, especially for Kansas. And that's what you expect. They shoot 40% for the three. First free throw attempt for Kansas the entire game. Adrian's excellent on the offensive glass and rips down a rebound. He's like a glue guy, man. He just does it all. He's such a special player. Bob Huggins raved about it to me. Hey, he says he's in the middle of everything we do. There he right is. Three. They needed a big basket right there. Kansas really trying to put some pressure on the defense by attacking. Mason goes baseline. Jackson a kick out, and Vic buries a three. They get it from all over. I'll tell you one thing, they are so unselfish. They share the ball really well. Vic steps in, comes off the bench, gives him a big three. I like the passing ability of Jackson. Kansas is hit five of six. They started four for 15. For the one-handed jam. Well, he did a great job the way they cut the ball to him as he cut down the gut of the defense. Kanate up, up, and away. Three-point game number two, Kansas on the road. Jackson hits another. I'll tell you one thing, he looked really good in his two sh shots we've seen from the three. Shot them with quick look. He didn't hesitate. Wasn't tentative. Good rhythm to his shot. His stock is rising, man. John, his stock is going up, up, and up. He's a mod able to answer with a bucket. Well, mod's been big for them in this first half. They're going to come up with some stumps. They can't get some stumps. Kanate oh. rejects Mason. Well, Kanate with perfect timing. Couldn't get it to go. Kanate, that won't go. Tip up. And eventually Carter has it. Miles and Kanate were down in the paint. We're going to watch Kanate right now go down the gut of the defense. Watch this. They double up on the ball. He sees the double up. He goes down the gut and there's the jam. Now he comes down and says, hey, I'm a human eraser. Don't bring that in here, baby. Don't bring that in here. Sagaba Kanate, the freshman from Mali, if making you, an impact. If you can play, they're going to find you. I don't care where you're from, Boog. I don't that care is the where truth. you're from. They are looking everywhere. Bragg with a rejection. Well, Saturday night, 6.15 Eastern on ESPN. Make sure to tune in. College Hoops Sonic Blockbuster. Kansas taking on Kentucky Rupp Arena, the SEC Big 12 Challenge. Also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Number two and number four. I just get what? goosebumps looking at those two names. You kidding me? Racing through my mind is greatness. And thinking of all the stars that are wear those uniforms. I know Dan and Jay and company are going to be excited to be part of that. That is absolutely going to be special. Kansas, Kentucky, put it on your schedule.
Hey, Dick, you asked for an update. I just got one from Kentucky. De'Aaron Fox is a game-time decision to play tonight. Kentucky plays after our game on ESPN. Tell you one thing, they say through this walk, walk through, they look pretty good. I got some inside information, Andy. I just got that from Kentucky. Game time decision. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're right on top of it. You're right on top of it. There's a double up. I tell you, the double teams have not really bothered. It's the open three again. Vic get a good look at it, but not able to hit it. It's caught it. Watkins rejected by Lightfoot. Mitch Lightfoot some rare playing time, and he gets a big block. Well, Bill Self told me I got to play a few guys because I want to be rested. They wear you down at halftime. Lightfoot, Vic, and Bragg are giving him some minutes off the bench. Lightfoot a block and a big offensive rebound. He's taking you so much with the ball. They got a deflection out of him there. Mason puts it on the floor. They reset the clock again by accident. What's happening with that clock, man? What's uh, happening with the clock? Are you controlling it? What's going on? It's not me. It's not me. Dives on the floor, kicks the ball out. And then they reset it. So now more math. To be a mathematical genius here tonight, huh? More I, used math. Teach, I used to teach a sixth grade. You did? I did. He's going for New Jersey. Tell you what, that game this weekend, you talk about Kentucky and all the talent that they have. But Frank Mason's going to have his work cut out for him going up against that group. I mean, Mason and Monk head to head. Mason has been one of the top players in the country, but Malik Monk, man, he has had some huge games. That's why he had the 47 point game where every point counted was so special against North Carolina. Be interesting watching Mason hook it up against Fox. Fox has that great size at the point guard. I mean, there's no doubt two of the best backcourts in America. You're throwing Villanova there as well, but. Really special. You look at the SEC right now, you know, who's going to challenge Kentucky, really? Where do they get challenged? I mean, they may slip once, but there's nobody in that league basically can challenge. I thought maybe Florida. But Florida slipped a little. I'll have Florida with Brett Musburger on Saturday against Oklahoma. The Gators certainly a good team, but they've lost some tough games lately. Joe Lodardi right now, seven Big 12 teams in. Is it He's got four in from the SEC. We'll see what happens by the end of the year. But Kentucky, you know, Bob Huggins was talking to him. He's had two one and done players in his career. How many is it? Calipari. I lost count. He can't count it anymore. Graham puts it on the floor, weaves inside, and one. Devontae Graham knifing through the lane and able to lay it in and absorb the contact. Well, he did that against Texas in the first half. He had 15, did score again till the end when he hit a big three. ESPN's exclusive pre- About number two, Kansas right now a four-point lead. John Chomby and Dick Vitale courtside the trifecta, baby. That's been the story as far as why Kansas is in this spot. Well, they're seven for 14 right now. Think about that. Seven threes. And you know what's a key? They've only turned the ball over four times against a team that leads the nation in forcing turnovers. And that reason, great guard play. When you're efficient at the perimeter like they are, with people like Graham and certainly Mason, and you factor in the ball handling skills of Jackson, they've done a great job getting shots against that pressure. So let's kick out Carter. That's a three. And it falls. It's a two point game. Look like that baby's going to roll out on him. See, they want to try They spread the court so well, and they have such excellent ball handlers. Mika Lugoso can handle the ball. It stays with Kansas. One of the things last year that Bill Self went to was with Graham and Mason that basically it's a two point guard attack. I mean, both guys are point guards. And it really helps in spots like this when you're facing this type of pressure. Again, only four turnovers forced 
by West Virginia. Look at that ball movement. Are you serious? Look at that ball movement. They get a great look there. Mason just could knock it down. Nice save by Phillip. They are really relying on the free ball. I love the way Adrian uses all the fundamental skills. The good puck fake. Yeah. It's wide open. He's a Morgan Town kid, as you said earlier, John. And they love him here. Plays with a lot of feeling. Loves the university. And they love him. Look at his plays. A 6 0 West Virginia run. And Nathan Adrian, the senior from right here in Morgantown, gives the Mountaineers the lead with that triple. Well, there's the extra pass. Being unselfish, and that's what good teams and teams that are well coached understand. You take good shots, you got a chance to win. You know, we're talking about the three game stretch earlier that they're facing. Kansas playing like on the road here, on the road in Kentucky, and then Baylor at home on Wednesday. Florida State, who Obi and I had on Saturday, had a six-game stretch playing six nationally rated teams, and they went five and one, and the only loss was to North Carolina. Great, great job being done by Leonard Hamilton. And they got a kid, a freshman, who's getting better and better and getting more publicity now and deserves it by the name of Isaac. Remember that name, Jonathan Isaac. The deflection there, Phillip. And that one out of bounds, and it's going to stay with West Virginia. Should have dropped the ball on the floor. A real bounce pass for your kids in traffic like that. Drop the little bounce pass. Oh, Poshi got into the ball. He had him on a box inside. He had Lightfoot right down there in a low box and he get the ball. That's a lost art, John. How to feed the post. Pearl Washington, the best I ever saw at Syracuse. He rest in peace. Great, great young guy. Lost his life too early. Ahmad flips it up. A little bit short. Fight for the loose ball. Jackson comes away with it. I love the handle of Jackson. He's got great size. Handle. I'll tell you, watching Josh Jackson at 6'8", put the ball on the floor the way he does. Yeah, really does. He has great handle. He's just got to work on his shot. I know he's made two threes here, but the numbers don't lie over the season. Shoot 29% from the three. And also, shooting on the free throw line about 53%. That's a no-no for a kid with his skill. Run end. He's not able to knock it down. Again, as we documented, neither of these teams shoots the free throws particularly well. We're in the 60s. 66 for West Virginia, 64 for Kansas. Phillip. You get into that three-second area, you drive and get in that area, a lot of good things can happen. You get the bounce go his way. It's a big, big game, especially for West Virginia. Who they need this win badly. Four possessions, Bill Self told me before the game is keeping West Virginia from probably being number one in the country. Oh, that's nice that pass. Line, beautiful. Brandon Jackson. What a great look by Graham. Great eye contact. Jackson with the great bounce off the floor. They're three perimeter players. If you factor those three, they're probably the best in the country on a perimeter. Those three. And they get a foul on Devontae yeah, Graham. That's his first. Hey, right here. Now watch a diagonal pass. Diane, they don't see ball, you man. That's a no-no. I know Bob Huggins not happy with that defensive possession. See that West Virginia uniform? I took a picture before I entered here with the statue outside. Yes, sir. Of the kid from Cabin Creek, Zeke. Jerry West, the logo. The logo. Yeah, that silhouette on the NBA logo. Well, you got Hot Rod out there as well. Hot Rod Hundley. Boy, I heard Hot Rod speak at a banquet one time. It was so good. Talking about his days here when Jerry West came as a freshman. Great story. And I know you're going to have Bob Huggins speaking at your gala coming up. Well, we're going to honor Bob. He's done so much for cancer. We're excited about that. He told me, I'm going to break John Calabrese's record for your gala. Most tables sold by West Virginia people are going to flood to Sarasota. 
Closing in on a minute to go first half. Been a good one in Morgan John. Graham step back. That's a two. He's had a big first half, just like he did against Texas. Then in the Texas game, he didn't score again until the end of the game with a big three. Shocker Smarts kids hustle, scrap. Kid Allen put up a freshman would be a very good player. Had a big game on the interior. Mason steps in and tries to come up with the steal. Carter stepped on the sideline. It'll be Kansas ball. Haven't seen West Virginia able to really turn them over for layups. One of their great strengths, they need the nation in creating the turnover and scoring off the turnover. Yeah, it's interesting to see the score as it is, and yet it hasn't been West Virginia with the lead because they've turned Kansas over so Not much. Not at all. They've been driving the ball really well. Get some good shots on the inside against Kansas. Help us self, Bill Self told Andy before the game. He said, we don't want live ball turnovers. We're they going to get the ball and go up for a layup. Right foot inside. Couldn't hit. Jackson came flying in and goes over the back, and they get the foul on Josh. Lightfoot from out of Arizona, Gatorade player of the year. Hey, speaking of Arizona, Sean Miller's club now in that Pac-12. What a game it's going to be when they play Oregon. I know UCLA is still going to be in the hunt. Even though they lost, they're one of the clubs Bill Self and I were talking about. will have a great chance to make a run for the national title. But Arizona's got the kid Trier back now. Came up with that great win, able to beat UCLA this past weekend. That last foul on Josh Jackson, his second. Now here we go to the free throw line. Free throw so big, they've been a nightmare for West Virginia. Canate and gets the front end. He's at 57%. You know, you don't like the harp on it, but I mean, it's a fact. You play an overtime game at home, and you go four for nine on a free throw line in overtime, and then you have an overtime game with Texas Tech, and you were six for 12? I mean, that's just a disaster. How's your game from the line of late? I know you can knock them down. I can shoot the ball. The best one-eyed 77-year-old shooter in America. And I'll challenge any 77-year-old on that line. Well, one eye. That I was can two. shoot the ball. <laughs> I West Virginia him. by three. I couldn't play this pressure defense, I'll tell you that. Look at him move his feet. Look at him, look at him. Stay a in. Adrian no. coming to help. Well, great job defensing by Phillip right there on the basketball. Clock winding down, does Graham see it? Fires it up. It's short, and that's the way to have. We'll come to a close. West Virginia up by three. Hey, will it be four in a row? Call your friends. You better watch. Three times Kansas is coming here, and they left with an L. They were number one in the nation last year. They left with an L. They're number one in the coaches' poll, number two in the AP poll. Will they survive here? Will they survive? Here's Andy Katz of Bob Huggins. All right, thank you, John. Bob, when you get into the locker room, what's the first thing you're going to tell your team that they have to fix in the second half? We can't give so much penetration and we can't overhelp. We overhelped and gave them open threes. What are you going to tell them that they did well? I thought we I thought we played hard. I thought we took better care of the ball. Thanks, Bob. Yep. Back to you. West Virginia and Bob Huggins, they are up three. Kansas knocking down the three. West Virginia not turning over Kansas a ton, but they're still ahead. After the break, we'll send it back to the studio for the Alpha Romeo halftime report. And back here in Morgan, John, the number two team in the country, Frank Mason's Kansas Jayhawks trailing at West Virginia. It's 38 to 35. Hi, everybody. John Chambi and Dick Vitale. It is a packed house and a home team right now trying to make it four straight wins in this building against this team. Kansas has shot the three well, though, and that's one of the reasons that they've stuck in this game. Seven for 16. Look at that. They're going wacky here. They're all going wacky. Unbelievable. Come on. Look at this here. Place is nuts, man. They're having a lot of fun. The three ball. Here it is. Shot seven for 16, but not good enough to have the lead. Will it be good enough to win? Mason and Graham did a great job in the first half. Didn't turn the ball over. On the other side, West Virginia, they were driving the basketball to the goal, beating guys off the bounce. There it is, going right to the goal, laying on the glass, very athletic, and now the gun of the defense. Oh, that was just a tremendous pass off the double team. A lot at stake here. You got Kansas with 18 in a row. You got them hoping to be number one in the nation. 
and number one actually in the coaches poll, but number two in the AP poll. Who knows more, the writers, the journalists, or the coaches? <laughs> so it's West Virginia by three. Andy Katz, what do you have? Is that bucket goes down there from Elijah Macon, Andy. Well, I walked on the court with Bill Self, and it's funny, Dick, he actually said, we took too many threes. He said, we need to get to the basket more. He did say that he thought they handled West Virginia's pressure well, but weren't converting enough, and also on the backboard, too many second shots for the Mountaineers. Oh, nobody back. Nobody back, Andy. Bill Self's got to be upset with those two possessions. He got a quick timeout, and I agree with you, Andy. I think Bill's right. Too many threes. Get the ball inside a little, inside out. They love it. Look at these people going wacky, John. Time now for Greatness Awaits. It's brought to you by PlayStation. Only three times this year has Kansas been an underdog, according to BPI, against Duke tonight, against West Virginia. And then on Saturday against Kentucky. So, I mean, this stretch of schedule is uh, is pretty brutal, but it is a rarity for for Kansas to be an underdog. Well, I'll tell you this: they're underdog here tonight. As that says, two and a half point underdogs. So I don't hear upset, upset if West Virginia went to prevail. There was a big deflection. Deflections, such a huge part of their success. Oh, he's a mob. right to the goal and throws it down. An 8-0 run. For the Mountaineers. Are you serious, Issa? That's unbelievable. What a start he's had. And Carter with two great dishes. I mean, they've come out here at halftime and really played exceptionally well. That's a big rebound by Josh Jackson. Issa would slam jam bam, man. He was climbing. You can see why he was a big time recruit out of Cleveland. I wonder if he played a little one on one with LeBron there. Look at that jam. He's a LeBron. Can you do that in Cleveland with the Cavs? The answer is yes, <laughs> and more. <laughs> the last foul on Adrian, his second. Ahmad now with 16 points. Came out really hot in the first half. And nine of their first, I believe, 12 points. I mean, he came out, he was really on fire early in the game. They're playing with a little chip on their shoulder after those two L's, John. There's a little chip on that shoulder. They know they're better than what they did performing, especially losing that game at home. Woodard was terrific in the second half. Juan Cougar's got a lot of good young kids. Carter and Mason battling to get the foul on Mason. You know, we talk about must games. We said must game for West Virginia this time of the year. They're looking for their identity to be a top 15 basketball team, top 10 maybe even. And you've got to win these kind of games when you're at home. Then another team that needs a big win Saturday. Florida, the Gators lost a couple in a row, and they play now Oklahoma down there. A good young Oklahoma team. Their record doesn't show it, but eventually that team is going to be a good basketball team in the future. Oh, look at this here. Wide open. Uh, good defensive reaction to him, but he was wide open. Feed into a mod. And it goes in. The mods have a one of those nights. One of those special, special nights. Issa Mott scored the first eight points of the game for West Virginia. And had himself a great night. They're doing a great job offensively. Their defense has been steady, but it's not creating offense for turnover. But they're doing a heck of a job, West Virginia, offensively. Jackson gets another three. He's made three today. And the book says, suspect shooter. Forget the book. Scouting report. You hear the baseball. Can't hit the curve. And then the guy goes yard. Timeout. Am I right, Boo? Indeed. Yeah. Jackson has been huge in this one. West Virginia gets a timeout. Has a little pitch out. Drive penetration creates the open look for Jackson. He's going to become a really good shooter. You watch him as his career unfolds and goes to the future. You can see the kid's got really good rhythm. Big time recruit number two, according to the ESPN 100. Only do Terry Giles rated ahead of him. He's a McDonald's All-American and his favorite childhood cartoon. Of course, you needed to know that. Soinks. Andy Katz, what do you have to add? 
When we were with uh, Kansas back in Hawaii, I was talking to Bill Self about sort of integrating Josh Jackson because he's had some of these one and dones before. Some have worked out, some haven't. He said the great thing about Josh Jackson, Josh Jackson, excuse me, is he knew to yield to the seniors like Frank Mason, but at the same time, when it was time to be assertive, he was okay doing that, and he's got great respect from all his teammates. Well, you can see the great chemistry they have on the floor. You can see they love playing with one another, Andy. They share the ball. You know, you wear that uniform or a Kentucky uniform or a Carolina or a Duke. You play within the realm of the team. You want to win. That's what it's all about. Adrian couldn't get it to go. Lucas the board. And now Mason. Let's double up on Mason. They get the ball away from the double team really well. Six-point game here in Morgantown. Mason inside. Offensive rebound of the putback. For one of the smallest guys in the court. Told me pregame his favorite player is Dirk Nowitzki. Wow. That's his favorite player. He's That's a Mavs Dirk, fan. Huh? And Matt and the Mavs Dirk Nowitzki is his favorite guy. It's a pretty good choice. How about it? He's headed for the Hall of Fame eventually. His career is over. Miles fouled inside. Is that driving ability? Kansas. They like to drive the basketball. There's Mason working on the inside. Now look at the offensive rebound comes. Nobody there. I mean, that's a no-no to let a guard score inside on the offensive glass. Those are things that lead you to baldness and chase me to TV. <laughs> got the Ziggy, went to television 38 years, and I haven't lost the game. John's the greatest job. I got a better record than Mike Krzyzewski. All right, see, now I've been around a little. I know what the Ziggy is, but tell the fans what the Ziggy is. Ziggy's getting fired, man. You don't want to get the Ziggy. <laughs> you know what that feeling. Adrian inside, had the step, and the bucket. Nice first step by Adrian. They're really executing. They're really efficient offensively. They're getting the shots they want against the Kansas defense. Bob Huggins want to push off on Mason. Jackson inside. And that foul is going to be on Tariq Phillip. Take a look at Bob on that sideline. He's uh, my kind of mirroring his coach in terms of his reaction. Bob had a big thing about the cylinder, the offensive player in the cylinder, and how the defensive player is being penalized. The offensive player can make contact on him, and yet the defensive player, see right here, here's what Bob's talking about. He's saying, well, gee whiz, the offensive player makes contact, but the call's always against the defense. He made a big thing about that in the local paper. But the offensive player is entitled to that area and that cylinder. Five-point game here in Morgantown. John Chambi, Dick Vitale, and Andy Katz. West Virginia trying to knock off number one and number two in the same season. Come on. Almost intercepted. And an offensive foul on Jackson. Yeah, he's out of control right there. Up in the air. Out of control. Number three on Jackson. Packed house in the home team. The home fans loving it so far tonight. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college. Little NBA Wednesday double header coming up tomorrow, 8 Eastern. The Warriors and the Hornets. And then it'll be the Lakers taking on the Blazers. Coverage tips with NBA countdown charge by Mountain Dew at 70. There's Jerry West up there. Talk about NBA. He's out there. Executive with the Golden State Warriors. One of my favorite players of all time. Jerry and Oscar. Man, you can imagine Jerry with the three point line. Give me a break. So good. It's like what they always said about Pete Maravich back in the day. Oh, Pistol. He was a show. He was a concert. They're going to see a Springsteen. They've been trying to get in that three second area where good things happen. Adrian. Tell you what, he comes up with big plays. I 
can see why Bob Huggins likes it. Plays hard, makes shots. Oh, turnover. There's one of the turnovers off that pressure. Carter triple. Donate the rebound. Spinning on Lucas. What an effort. Look at that effort by Adrian. Look at that effort by Adrian. And there's no other place he wanted to play. Local kid, the last time a scholarship player from Morgantown was at West Virginia. That person, Jay Jacobs, is now doing radio. This was in the late 50s. Nathan Adrian told us that he used to come to games here. Remember, John, we were talking to him. Big East games, obviously, back in the day when he was a youngster. Now the Big 12. Loves playing for Bob Huggins. And by the way, when he first came here, they weren't pressed Virginia. He had to adjust his game and get in shape to play this way. But he said there's no other place he would want to play than right here in his hometown. Well, they're lucky to have him because he's such an unbelievable important part of your whole system. He's been a major part of it. This is the third year of what they call Press Virginia. The scout, former Cleveland State coach Kevin Mackey, who helped Bob Huggins come up with the, the Press Virginia concept, is actually here tonight. Pacers scout Kevin Kevin Mackey. They were chatting pregame. But Adrian, great story. Bob Huggins loves him. He loves anybody who plays hard, man. He likes loyalty, as Andy spoke about. I asked Adrian one time, how many games do you think you've seen in this building? And he just kind of looked up to the sky and he said, man, I don't think I'd be able to count them. Tell you one thing, he had to buy tickets in those days. He has to buy them now. That's right. I guarantee he's not buying a ticket now for the last four years. Eight-point game, West Virginia in control. Number two, Kansas, on the road and on the ropes. West Virginia doing a better job here in this half defensively. Mason tried to sell the ball. McKaylis to dribble in the three. McKaylis has been very quiet. They got to get him to make some shots. And score the basket. Goaltending there. Kip Kissinger with the call. McKaylis got to get some open looks and make some threes. He shoots 40 percent. When he arrived in Kansas, he was 16 years old. McKaylis is actually four months younger than Josh Jackson. So I mean, he's well, still he's still a baby. He's still a diaper dad. Yeah, he's still a diaper dad. So a junior and a freshman, and the junior is younger. Eat inside. Oh, Nicely nice done on oh, Jamaica. Tell you what, what a nice entry. The good bounce pass to the post. High percentage shot. Their execution has been superb here in the second half. Ram inside. Offensive foul. That's the call that Bob Huggins has been waiting for. That push off. Tell you and what, they get they, it on Graham. They got this crowd pumped up, baby. They're smelling it. 18 in a row by the Jayhawks on, on the line. Fourth trip in a row where they're trying to beat the Jayhawks. Look at this. They're cheering this. Look at this. They're cheering out there. I mean. So Graham will grab a seat. West Virginia with the ball up by eight, under 14 to go. Inside, Tariq Phillip. Phillip with the drive to the goal. That's been their strength here, John. Attack, attack, attack. Get to the rim. Make them have to guard us. Kansas three ball, they're two ball. And they are attacking off the bounce. Kyluk rebounds the three miss. Mason got it. Mason gets the three, but you credit that to Mikhailuk. Terrific job, offensive rebound, and found an outstanding shooter, Mason. 54% thus far this year from the three. Said he spent the offseason making 250 NBA three-pointers per day. Most college guys could not make 54% with any with nobody guarding. Oh, nobody back! Nobody back! Oh! 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 He missed. I 
could have made that. <laughs> oh. Vic not able to finish as he was congested. He got really great job of hustling to get back because he looked like he had an open layup. Miles three wouldn't fall. They love putting the head on the basketball. Look at him move his feet. Look at the defense. Say, you're not going to beat me, baby. You're not going to make the turn on me. Oh, great job of defense. Made him give up the ball. Tavon Myers with that defense. Lucas draws the foul. Big, strong body. Lucas from out of Oregon. Boy, what a team they got. The Ducks. They are special. Be some battle in Arizona and the Ducks hook up. Looks like there's about to be a line change for you Bob Huggins. Hockey. Well, I You're mean, talking hockey. <laughs> I don't know hockey. Yeah. Red line, blue line, green line. I don't understand hockey. I respect it. Both teams you talked about earlier, John. Struggle City on the free throw line. Bacon goes to sit. Philip West. And Philip, the bench has been a big key for Bob Huggins' team this year. You know, John, I talked with Obi in the last game I had for the State Louisville. There are positives and negatives about having a deep bench. I mean, sometimes you're breaking up rhythm, the effectiveness of a unit together. But the positives are you're going to have fresh legs, especially coming down the stretch. Feet inside, he's so Look at that execution. I mean, that's high percentage basketball. Get on a low box, get the ball inside. And that is a new career high. Isamad, the sophomore with 20. He's had really a struggle the last couple of games, so this is a big plus for him. Yeah, Ahmad with just three points in their loss at Kansas State. Foul inside, and they get Kanate. West Virginia at home and enjoying it. the home fans watching their team lead by nine. Ahmad last year started the entire year as a freshman. We average about five points a game, but he has really developed as an offensive player. How about Jackson? That's his fourth three-pointer of the game. He's shooting it really well. Quick, no hesitation. Boy, a three, a change of complexion. That's a 10-3 I believe they've made here thus far. And four out of four from three, and it's a six point game. Well, I hope that 29% three point shooting. Ahmad is fouled. I'm really impressed the way West Virginia has moved the ball, has attacked off the bounds, and has entered the ball into the post. Bob Huggins had these kids ready to play and execute because they're executing really well. 28 points in the paint, it's been a big team. So, uh, for West Virginia in this game. It hasn't gone necessarily according to plan. For example, Dick, if I had told you that they'd only have five points off of turnovers in the first half, you probably wouldn't have expected that West Virginia would have been leading at the half by three. Absolutely. You're right, John. The defense has done a solid job. They have not created offense because of the effectiveness of the way they handle the ball, Kansas. comes that pressure. They wear you down. They try to wear you down physically. A little frustrating. Always seeing double teams. So a good ball movement. Grand gets a three. Count the basket and then a foul on West Virginia. See the way they reverse that ball off the double team to get the open look for the three? Man, they're doing a great job getting those open looks for the three. And that three ball changes things quickly. That nine point lead disappears wow. down to four. Foul on Carter. That's his second. Oh my. Jackson. Oh. Not able to oh. finish. Oh. And then they get the foul on Bragg and the loose ball. What a turnaround. I mean, Man. that could be a four point turnaround. Incredible. At the jam. Unreal. Jackson with sky into the rim, the back of the rim. He bricks it on the back of the rim. Yet if he can finish that, it's a two-point game. Instead, it leads to the loose ball. And now Bragg has four fouls. So Lucas 
has to come back in. This is the area where it's difficult that they're so thin because right, exactly. with the two big guys, Lucas and Bragg, you got to be careful. And here's the adjustment, goes to the zone. Trying to protect players, goes through a little matchup, 2-3 zone right now. Bill Self, he makes adjustments really well in coaching. It's like Belichick does in football. And that's why he wins year in and year out. And same with Bill Self. He understands we're forward again. Two on one. Two on one. Oh, use the bounce pass. Wow. Able to convert. What a was all Mason there. What a backcourt. What a tandem. That duo is really special. There's a 2 3 zone. You know they're not going away. I'll tell you what. You don't win 18 in a row and go away. Out of bounds, Kansas basketball. Little momentum right now going to Kansas way. There's a two man break. Right now, bounce past that ball. Drop it on a dime. Drop it on a dime, like my man Kellogg used to say, or still says. Two point game all of a sudden. And Kansas on an 8 2 run. And possession of basketball. I'm really impressed with Jackson. He's better than advertised. And the Kylo gives Kansas the lead. Created by, again, the penetration, the ball handling skills of Jackson created that for my Kylo. And he finally knocks a three down. They're sitting in that zone. Take away a lot of the drives now with that zone. Another turnover. Wow. Mason with a little wow. back tap. Flips it up. He wanted Lucas for the lob. And then they get the travel. Good job defensively there. And a little layup. <laughs> I thought he got a little too unselfish right there. Graham should have shot that ball in the lane. Adrian looked like he might have hurt his ankle. That'd be a tough loss. Him on the side going to the locker room right now. That left ankle. See that zone's going to take away the drive, which was so effective for West Virginia. They're not a great perimeter shooting team. The mob. Uh, they got to find a mob because this is his night. He has really been on fire tonight. Look at that handle. Mason, little too strong. West the board. I'm so impressed with the ball handling skills of the Kansas perimeter players. Staying in that 2-3 zone. Got to get the gaps and seams of it. West can't hit. Ahmad can't follow. Make it inside. One time Ahmad came up short. Had an easy shot. Was easier than he expected. Now we get down to the free throw line. Coming down eight last single digit minutes. Free throw line has been a nightmare in close games for West Virginia. So let's see what they do right now, Boog. So make it will go to the line. He's a 61% guy. Adrian's over there nursing what appeared to be an injured ankle. And the missed free throw at a crucial time. Yeah, I was just back in that hallway and I caught up with Nathan. I said, you all right? He says, yeah, I'm fine. Well, you better get on the court. They need him. <laughs> May not look it, but that's what he told me. Tell you, Andy, the free throw line has been a disaster for some teams. and It's been a nightmare for West Virginia. I look good there. Make it gets at. Two point West Virginia lead. You got your hands full defensively when you try to go on these tandem. You got to really play, concentrate, move your feet. Got to communicate, got to talk to one another. Good help right there. Jackson. Phillip the board. West Virginia the ball up two. They got to get Issa more shots of mine. He's got the rhythm today. West buries it. Lamont West from the corner. Yeah, Lamont West, man, with the big shot. They got that bench. They bring a lot of bodies in, like Florida State does. Well, West, the guy who can make shots. West Virginia on a 6 0 run. Graham hesitates, trying to feed Lightfoot, and they get the foul. 
on the freshman. This game's been a turnaround, a little spurts, John. Spurt right now goes to West Virginia. Oh, will they make it happen? Will they beat Kansas for the fourth straight time? ESPN's exclusive presentation. Back here in Morgantown, five-point game, number 18, West Virginia. Trying to knock off the number two team in the land. John Chami, the Hall of Famer, Dick Vitale. It's been a fun game so far. Oh, it's been great. Back and forth and some interesting sort of ebbs and flows. Hey, you have an event coming up in May that we want to talk about. Well, we're going to honor Bob Huggins as one of our guys, along with Brian Kelly of Notre Dame, who does a great job to raise money for cancer on our own. Chris Berman, and then we're raising money for John Saunders. We're going to have a tribute to John at the event. John meant so much. I miss him so badly. He's just such a special guy. I can't believe he's gone. He and Stuart Scott. People that are interested, all they got to do is call 941-350-0580. We will sell out. And my goal this year is $3 million for kids battling cancer. So far the gala, we've raised $18 million since the pandemic. Tremendous work, Dick, and I want to add this point that's pretty unique about Bob Huggins' contract. He has one game in his contract. Wow. Josh Jackson with a furious throwdown right there. He's showing why he's one of the premier recruits in America. That kid is absolutely special. He is better than what I heard about him. All right, before Josh Jackson rudely interrupted you, Andy Katz, the one game in his contract. That if he wins, that being Kansas, he gets $25,000. So the last three years, $75,000. If he wins tonight, that makes $100,000. But that $75,000 he has donated to the Norma May Huggins Cancer Research Endowment, named after his mother. So does great work for that research fund he, in his contract specifically. If he beats Kansas, he gets $25,000. It's the only school in his contract that is designated as such. And we asked about the football coach, Dana Holgerson, if he's got something in his contract, if he beats Oklahoma or Texas, and the answer is no. Just Bob Huggins beating Kansas, but he donates the money to the cancer research named after his mother. Well, I think it's great. I think a lot of the coaches, people don't realize, do an amazing job in helping us raise money for cancer. Hey, I think that was that the fourth foul on that Jackson? That is number four on Jackson. Four on Jackson. And Bill Silk just signaled to him he's staying in there, 6.35 to go. Again, there's four on him. There's also four on Bragg. So there's just there's not a lot of places to go here. And Jackson's been a, a huge part of well, their success tonight. Well, what they got to do is make sure they drive the ball at his area. Look at that jam. Has he been special? I mean, maybe it's just me, but if I'm a scout, I'm watching that. I am so in awe, especially the way he shot the three as well. we got a five-point game. So, again, West Virginia, they've won the last three times these teams have played in this building. It's hard to believe Kansas has not lost to a loss to Indiana way. First game of the year. 18 straight First Kansas game of the year. Won. So they a couple got, of streaks on the line. They got great fans. I love going here. Rag goes to work. And that one swatted out of bounds by Macon. Tell you what, they got some shot blockers in that lane. Some athletes coming over. They take pride in playing defense. These about there fans love that. It's like when you go to Kansas, those Rock Chalk Jayhawk fans love what they see. And they've been treated to some great basketball for many a year. Makai Luke. Oh, this contact inside. This contact inside. I believe that's going to be called on Lucas. Yeah. Wow. That's Lucas's third. And now we get down to making free throws. And we can't emphasize enough how that has been a real dilemma for West Virginia down the stretching game. That was a little bit of an odd call, maybe seeing the beginning part of it, but it basically just looked like the West Virginia player kind of cut under the legs of Landon Lucas, and they got him for the foul. Whoever they saw make contact, you could call it either guy there. Big free throw right there from Elijah Macon. You think they worked on a free throw a little bit? Practice after losing to Kansas State? I mean, think about it. They're, every loss has been four points and less in their four losses. Three in conference play. Lost to Temple in the last possession as well. 
gives you a little breathing room when they make those free throws. It's like a free possession. Oh, this place is going to get loud now, baby. It's going to get loud. Bob Hoggins observing from the stool right next to his bench, next to his buddy, Billy Hahn. Billy Hahn's been with him for years. And Billy Hahn said to me today, he hasn't been a lot of fun to be around the last <laughs> couple of days. After a couple of losses, foul on West Virginia. There's Billy Hahn. Billy Hahn's been a basketball lifer. A lifer. Billy said, hadn't been a lot of fun to be around. They said, do you tell him that? And he said, yeah, I tell him. You can tell them anything you want. They're really so tight and close. Our patience right here. But we're going to double up on a ball. We're picked up the dribble. Mason able to step through. Makai Luke. That one was halfway down. West Virginia up seven with the ball. Execution has been great by West Virginia. They've really executed been so efficient moving the ball. Carter in a wide open look at it. Jackson better be careful. He'll pick up number five. What a terrific effort right there by Adrian to get that offensive rebound. His teammates get up and clap on the bench. What an unbelievable play he just made to give him another possession. One of the best offensive rebounders in the Big 12, Nathan Adrian. Good look, Amar. Adrian. Adrian with the diagonal pass. Great size from the perimeter. Oh, is he playing a heck of a game? He was responsible for that last possession. They love it. Look at these fans. They're going to walk you all over. Oh, man. They are so excited. It's a 6-0 West Virginia run. And Adrian right here. Watch the offensive rebound. Watch this off. It keeps the ball alive. Look at that tenacity. Look at how tenacious he is. I stopped getting that rock, baby. And then you take a little patience right here. And watch now he catches the ball. Now the great size right here. He has great vision. He throws the diagonal pass to Ahmad, who's been on fire. And the Mountaineer fans are smelling a big, big W. Two and weeks ago, it. you were here, baby, when they beat Baylor, who's number one. 89-68, they blasted him. That was the, I think, the biggest spread of a team being named number one in their first game as number one. Oh, they feel it. They feel it. There's electricity in the house. I can feel it. There's a lot of basketball yet to be played, though. These Kansas kids will not go away. They will battle and battle and battle. There's a reason every year they're one of the best in America. Jackson size made that catch with them. 18 in a row for Kansas after losing that opener in overtime in Hawaii to Indiana. Yeah, look, think about it. They got 53 in a row at home. Factor in. Anytime you're in charge of the ticket operations of an event, they count that as a home game. And that includes, I think, a couple games at Sprint. Yep. But they got 53 in a row at Allen Fieldhouse, one of the greatest venues in college basketball. Can't wait to be there Wednesday night when they play Baylor. Yeah, that is a bucket list type of place. Absolutely. It's like Wrigley Field, Fenway no Park, just like Cameron Indoor Stadium. But what about Dennis Smith last night for North Carolina State? I thought that Danny put a show on late in the game to beat Duke. Great win for Mark Gottfried's team. This was a must game here tonight for West Virginia. They need this win badly to show they are one of the elite teams in America. Well, they made their free throws tonight. Kansas is not. Sitting in a 2 3 zone right now. And a foul inside. It'll be on Elijah Maka. And after Kentucky, Tennessee tonight, stick around. It's Sports Center at night. Bucci and Anderson. They'll have highlights and breakdowns from college and NBA, the NHL, the Aussie Open. And look ahead to Super Bowl 51, the entire night in sports with Bucci and Anderson. Well, Tom Brady, you know, he's just a winner. I got Brady winning it all. I know Anderson's on cloud nine over his Wisconsin Badgers. 
playing great basketball. Kane can have and Hayes. Here it is now. Every possession is big here. Nice entry. What great a look, Lucas. Able to throw it down. He had excellent position with the seal off. And it was also a tremendous pass to the entry. Michael Luke did a phenomenal job there. West Virginia with the advantage, 30 of their 70 in the paint. Adrian. Double up on the baseline. I like Adrian's passing ability. Wait to throw the ball over the top of the defense. That was a big time drive. I mean, he made his mind up. He saw a little space. He attacked the space. Mason goes down hard. Miles up ahead. Oh, Are you serious? Are you serious? They're dancing, baby. They're dancing. Oh, they're jumping with joy. They're bumping away. The Mountaineers. They say, we are back, baby. We are back. Going to be four in a row beat Kansas here. That would be unbelievable. Next up for Kansas, Kentucky. Looks like they may have their full complement of players. De'Aaron Fox has been dealing with an injured ankle, but ran hard in practice today and is preparing for the game against Tennessee. Let's go to Andy Katz with more. All right, thank you, Carl. I just got a text about within the last 10 minutes from Kentucky head coach John Calipari telling me that he expects De'Aaron Fox to play. But he said if the ankle bothers him, he won't hesitate to pull him. That's right from Kentucky head coach John Calipari moments before tip-off. Back to you, Dick and John. Don't get a technical now, Bobby. Bobby, was, that's exactly what he was talking about, how the defense is being penalized and the offensive players making contact in that cylinder with his free hand dribble. He's got to be careful. He doesn't need any technicals now. That would be totally a nightmare. Foul on Phillip. He's got the crowd demonstrating the push-off. West Virginia right now on a 16-4 run. Kansas took a 59-58 lead. And now a 16-5 run. Mike Cazarza, the local writer, wrote all about Bob's comments today. Graham missing the second. See, now shot selection so big on every possession. Just take time off that clock. Don't go to a store. They use a lot of that shot clock. Use a lot of that clock. They like to let things happen in that high post area. Clear outside. Do a great job clearing the court. Lucas rebounds the miss. And watch the free ball now. Three ball becomes really big. Jackson, left hand. Oh, goodness. He has put on a show here. He has put on a show. He has shown his incredible skills driving the ball, shooting the three, handling the ball. He is an absolute PT pair, a prime time performer. Give me a little diaper dandy to he, move. He's a diaper dandy as well. <laughs> he's also the three S man, super scintillating, sensational. Like you, Bud. It's been great work with you, buddy. Yeah, it's good to see you, sir. Oh, what a play. Nice play. speed inside Miles. Foul to don't go to the line. Josh Jackson and oh, Kansas trailing in this one, but Jackson's been Phenomenal. He has been absolutely sensational. Here he is driving, changes to the left hand. Man, I can see why Tom Izzo had all the adjectives describing him. You know, Carl Ravitch was talking about Purdue, You're talking about Swan again. What a year he has had for Purdue. Incredible. You talk about player of the year, so they're going to talk about that kid. He's had four 20 20 games. Jay Will wearing the same suit two days in a row. I know they were discussing. Fashion back there. Shooting free throw pretty good here tonight. Yeah, West Virginia's knocked him down. Kansas has. It. Yes, that oh, was my great ball. hustle. He hustled for that ball. I hustled him for that ball. It's a 50 50 ball. You got to get it. West Virginia's getting those balls. Under two to go. Nine point game. They better not rush the court. They've been 
too good, too good of a program. They beat number one. It's contact. They're not going to be denied tonight, baby. They're not being denied. Bob Huggins and his kids are bouncing back after those two losses. 18 in a row of Kansas will now come to an end. Last time they lost was to Indiana, who by the way lost a heck of a player. Had an OB to an injury. Same with Creighton losing Maurice Watson. Injuries is so, so important as you get to this time of the year. You lose a key player, it's tough to replace him. It's been a problem with Duke, too. I mean, so many players, you get Giles nowhere near what we all know he could be with all the injuries he's had. And Anobi's a special player, Watson as well, and it's hard. Oh, and here they here they come. Uh, Dick Vitale, they're, they're not coming down to just get a closer look for the moment. See, they're getting closer. I don't understand that. I mean, they're too good of a team. They've had too much success. You worry about injuries, John. People get out of control. The two of us, you mean? Not the, us, anybody. I, I, I just have so much fear that something could happen on that court. Jackson lost a handle, light foot, and he's fouled. Great performance so offensively, especially by West Virginia. All right, more college basketball Thursday night. Virginia Tech at number nine. North Carolina comes your way at 8 Eastern from the Dean Smith Center. Tar Heels and the Hokies. But Buzz Williams done a nice job. He has. That Virginia Tech. He yep, he has, John. But I love that North Carolina team. Barry, Jackson, Meeks and company. Hicks. Foul shot. Again, Kansas, we talked about it earlier. Bill told us, struggled on a free throw line. One of the reasons the numbers are so low, though, as a bouquet who got hurt, shoots 29% on the line. And he'll eventually be a, a good player. And Bill said he expects him to be a special player, the post. Kansas, four out of 10 from the line in the second half. That's 40%. Even a dummy like me can figure that out. Four out of 11 now. They go down about 37% now. <laughs> wow. There's the sixth grade teacher in you coming yeah. out. Let's hold the ball, spread the court. What a tremendous performance here in the second half in particular by this West Virginia team. Oh, no, no, no. He's a little hot dog time now. So I can't that count. They get the foul on Josh Jackson, and he is done. Well, that Kansas Baylor game is going to be a big, big game Wednesday night. When you talk about winning the Big 12, I still say you got to go through Lawrence, Kansas, 12 years in a row. That achievement by Bill Self. They're heading for 13. Team that did 13 was the Wizard of Westwood, John Wooden, UCLA. It's amazing they've won more consecutive regular season titles with Bill Self than he has home losses. Oh, he has nine home losses. Incredible. You're lucky I'm not like Walt. Because I right now, you know, Walt, he gets so excited. He took the popcorn, he poured it over oh, Dave Pash's head. I, I'm so excited right now, I might take this water and pour it on your head. Okay. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't do it, John. I, I <laughs> promise, Boo. I promise. Bill and I, we did a game with Lamar I had James. my Bill Walton experience in Maui. Oh, you did? <laughs> I had mine when I worked with him for LeBron's first game on television. That's High right. A lot of fun. Oh, they got it. What a performance tonight. A-plus performance because they beat a super basketball on the collegiate level team in Kansas, and they earned this W. West Virginia, they're going to be proud tonight of their incredible performance. Kentucky and Tennessee coming up next. West Virginia about to do it again to Kansas for the fourth straight time in this building. And an 18 game win streak comes to an end. Yes, sir. Celebration time in Morgantown. One of the big wins again for Bob Huggins in his career. 807. I know one thing, he feels a heck of a lot better now than he did a couple hours ago when he was a nervous wreck about this game. No, they needed a win. They had dropped two straight. West Virginia ends Kansas 18-game win streak. Bob Huggins' team has knocked off number one and number two. First time that's happened since the 2011-2012 season.
And what a run they finished on. 27 to 10 to finish the game. Dickie B was fun tonight. West Virginia with a great effort. They needed a win and they got it. They did a terrific job. We know about their defense, but their offensive execution was an absolute coach's clinic. They did a great job getting great possessions and tremendous shots. Issa Mata, career high 27. West Virginia wins at 85 69. Up next, 10, Kentucky and Tennessee. For Dick Vitale and our entire crew, I'm John Jamba. Here's Brent Musburger and Sean Farnham. John and Dick.